Hello everyone, welcome to an exciting episode of Gothic Gardening. Today we're going to talk about grass. Not that kind of grass, the other kind of grass. So, uh, I recently got a new tool. Ta-da! It's beautiful. It's Japanese sickle. And uh, the reason I got this instead of a weed eater or a lawnmower is I like doing things the hard way. I have a very sedentary day job. And... Uh, only exercise it really gets working in the yard, so I figure if I do it the hard way, I can eventually become a svelte and beautiful thing that everyone will admire. Or, I will uh, completely burn out, my yard will fall trash, and I won't ever do anything with it ever again. So, you know, uh, things can happen here. It could be exciting. Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to talk to you about uh, grass, as in that stuff. Oh, look at all that grass and uh, uses for it that you might not have uh, already known about. Before I get to uses of, of uh, grass, we're gonna talk about how to use the Japanese sickle. I literally just did these shots and realized I had the camera on the wrong way and all I got was a shot of my shirt. So uh, let's try this again. We're gonna go over technique. This is the sickle that's the sharp part. We want to make sure that the sharp part catches the grass. The sharp part, Jesus. The sharp part catches the grass, not the edge right here, because whenever you swing it, it's really easy just to do it like this, and that isn't going to cut much. You need the grass to catch as much of the blade as possible, so when you swing it, you have to do more of this motion. Now, as you'll see, I'm missing, I missed a clump here. And if you were to look at the rest of my lawn right now, it uh, looks kind of mangy because I've missed several clumps because of my technique I need to work on. And it's something that really takes practice more than anything else. But I'm positive there's going to be somebody in the comment section who has used a Japanese sickle for years and has tons of practical experience. Right now, that person is doubtlessly in the comment section right now screaming about how bad my technique is and how I could do it better. And I would ask that if you are that person, do me a favor and uh, go gentle. These videos are as much a journal about me doing my garden and learning as I go as they are instructional. So odds are good, in a few of these videos, I may have some information that isn't entirely accurate or maybe doesn't work within the context of what I'm talking about as well. But I will eventually figure it out because something will inevitably go wrong and I will have to find a solution for it. Which brings me to my next topic, why I'm talking about grass. Oh, my hair looks amazing right now. It's fantastico. All right, there we go. So, it's not just the fact that my yard needs mowing. It does need mowing, but grass actually has multiple uses. I was having problems with a lot of my uh, peppers and watermelons just turning black and just dying on the vine. And I looked it up and it was saying that they're either being overwatered or they're not getting enough calcium which overwatering causes them not to absorb calcium as well. So in the end, it's calcium. Well, I went online, I checked a whole bunch of stuff and all the stuff I was finding was saying that in order to fix the calcium levels in my uh, soil, I need to go and buy plant food. And it, all the links were big on selling me plant food, which is frustrating. Cause uh, I'm not making money here. I'm not, we're doing this garden kind of on the cheap as best we can. Because, you know, we have other bills to worry about. I can't go buy and plant food willy-nilly. What, I look like a, what, I look like a money tree? I haven't planted a money tree yet. I mean, that's on the list. I'll plant the money tree probably in the next couple of years. I don't have it right now. So, you know, like I'm not going to buy one bag of plant food that only handles one bed. I, I, I need to handle all the beds. So, really frustrated. Did some more Googling. Did some thinking. And I had an epiphany. Milk has a lot of calcium in it. Tons of calcium. What do cows eat? Grass. So I went online and typed into Google, does grass have calcium? And Google said, yes, it does. It does indeed. So I realized I have a yard full of plant material, full plant food, and I don't need to go buy an expensive bag of it. I've been spreading that grass around the base of these plants to try to help them get some calcium as the grass 
breaks down. And so far, little tomato plant buddy, he hasn't produced anything yet, but he does have some flowers. So I'm very excited. This is going to be a, uh, I believe, cherry tomatoes, I think. I'm not sure. You know, if I was smarter, I would have labeled all of these instead of guessing like I have been. But you know, I'll, uh, I'll remedy that whenever I plant again in the fall. But because I spread the uh, grass around the base of a lot of these plants, I am very proud to say, ta-da, look at this guy. Look at my pretty buddy. Yeah, there's a watermelon right there. This is the largest one we've had grow so far, and I have very high hopes for him. I'm very excited about that. Because most of the other watermelon we've gotten have kind of died on the vine. In fact, the uh, watermelon from the other day that was over here that I showed you, uh, that's dead. Yeah, it, it, it actually died a couple days later. Uh, here we have various uh, types of squash and whatnot. And hidden amongst it, I'm very proud, one corn stalk that the birds did not get. So this one, hopefully, this I think this is the only... Nope, nope, there's another survivor there too. And he's covered in ants though. That means they're probably herding aphids. So that, that's not going to be alive too much longer, I don't think, unless I do something about those. Pro tip, diatomaceous earth is your friend. It takes care of ants and whatnot. But anyway, I'm very happy that this guy's doing so well, and maybe his buddy will do well too, if the ants don't get him. So out of the 30 corn I had planted in here, uh, we have two survivors. Yes, I planted them very close together. They were clumped. I had a feeling we were going to lose some to birds, so I figured it would end up naturally spacing itself out. I didn't realize we were going to lose almost all of them to birds and only have two left in this particular bed. And the next bed over, we have uh, another corn buddy that's actually doing kind of decent. And another corn buddy who's really tiny back there hiding behind all the peas. So you might be wondering why I started talking about corn in a video about grass. Fun fact, corn is grass. It's kind of grass. It's just one that over years and years of being cultivated by humans, uh, we developed it so that the actual seed clusters at the top that you see on a lot of grass, um, actually, hold on, let me see if I can find some right here. The good thing about having so many weeds and whatnot in my yard is I have plenty of examples from the wild. So this, these are little seed pod bits at the top of the grass. And corn, over time, with something similar to this that we bred for larger and larger seed pods until finally we ended up with the giant ears of corn that we're used to these days. That's largely from uh, millennia of controlled cross-pollination and whatnot. To try to get the best results for the biggest corn. I usually have something clever to end these with, but I don't today because it is super hot outside. I don't know if you've noticed, so far I've managed to take care of uh, uh, only about 30 square feet. So uh, I'm going to be at this a while. Anyway, keep your masks on out there. You got to be safe.